Welcome to the Tell Me Something Good podcast. Ranked by the International Association of Awesome Podcasts as the best podcast in the history of podcasts. Wait, is uh is that a thing? I don't I don't think that's a thing. Anyway. Seeking to shine a light on all that is good in an ever darkening world of negativity. Here's your host, Clint Swindoll. Hey, 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 everybody. Clint Swindoll here, and this is the Tell Me Something Good podcast, the show that is all about building a more positive world by overcoming negativity. You know, I start every episode with the same goal, to somehow engage your mind, encourage your heart, or enlighten your soul. I am happy you're here. This is episode number 24 of the Tell Me Something Good podcast. Brought to you by Let's Talk Smack, an app that provides daily nudges to take your social media game to a whole new level. Look, if you're tired of not knowing what to post on social media as you promote your small business or just want to have a more engaging presence personally on social media, you need a plan and the Let's Talk Smack app can help you create your plan. Check it out wherever you get your apps. I've been doing some research lately. I've been trying to figure out how long businesses survive. I read a long time ago that 80% of businesses fail within the first year, and half of the surviving 20% fail within five years. I have no idea if that is true or not, because it seems there are all kinds of guesses out there. In fact, yesterday I read one report from Inc. Magazine that reported 96% of businesses fail within 10 years. Wow. If you make it 10 years, you're a part of the 4%. What I couldn't find was how many of the 4% make it to 20 years. Some of you may be asking, well, why would you want to know that? Hey, Clint, why would you want to know that? Well, I'll tell you why I want to know that. Because 20 years ago today, we hung out a shingle to start a leadership development company called Verbalocity. And 20 years later, we are still going strong. So today, my friends, is a celebration. It's not quite the celebration we had planned. In January, my wife Heather and I were planning an event. We were going to invite friends, family, and clients who have been a part of this journey. We were going to distribute some swag with our 20-year anniversary logo. We were going to tell the story of the past 20 years, the ups and the downs. We were going to share a few lessons learned along the way, and we were going to announce the publication of a new book. It was really going to be a cool face-to-face celebration. And then... We were hit with a global pandemic that blocked our face-to-face celebration. What? I know, I know. Stupid COVID-19. While it may have thrown a big old wet blanket on our event, it has not dampened our spirit of celebration and the appreciation we have for having made it 20 years. So, while we won't be gathering with friends, family, and clients today, and we won't be handing out swag with our 20-year anniversary logo, We can still share those lessons and tell the story. And to do that, I have a very special guest. I talk about her a lot. She has experienced every good and not so good time for our company. She's been the back office support for most of the past 20 years because she is not someone who wants to hold the mic and be up front. I would say she's my better half, but that math would be incorrect. The reality is she's my better three quarters. And she is the guest on the podcast today, my bride, Heather Swindoll. Are you ready for me? Well, I guess so. Coming into the studio. (laughs) Well, you traveled far to be on the podcast today, all of 20 steps down the hall from your office to our home studio. Thanks for making the long trip and for being willing to come out from behind the curtain and for being on the podcast. I know, it's actually very weird for me. Um, I'm usually the one helping to coordinate the guest. 
Can you believe it's been 20 years we've been doing this? I know, it's crazy. Uh, the time has absolutely flown by. I mean, for me, as I was just telling you yesterday, it seems like yesterday that we were setting up the home office in San Antonio. Yeah, it's gone by fast. It's been a fun journey, though. It has. It's been a great journey. Um, why don't you tell the listeners today how the journey even started? Well, first of all, it's a journey that began way before the year 2000. It actually started in 1986 when I was 18 years old. I had just finished my freshman year in college. I was given and accepted the opportunity to speak to the incoming freshman class about living on campus. You know, what they could bring, what they couldn't bring, what they could do, what they couldn't do. You know, all the rules, if you will. Yeah, I remember that story. You just up and agreed to stand on stage and speak as a kid. I mean, 18 to me as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, most people would rather die than speak in public. That's true. <laughs> I think it's called glossophobia or something or other like that, the fear of speaking. For me, I couldn't get on that stage fast enough. At just 18 years old. While I remember very little about that experience, there is one thing I will never forget. I said something that made this giant group of people laugh, and I remember standing there thinking to myself at that moment, I have to do this for the rest of my life. So that experience made it clear to me what I'd do for a living. I would stand on a stage and I would speak. What I didn't know is what I'd speak about. If I could have walked out of college and straight into the speaking world and onto a stage, I would have done it. I guess there's not many people that are willing to pay a college kid to hear about their experiences. Well, so. that's pretty true. And in fact, most of the things I did in college, I probably wouldn't want to be talking about in public anyway. So <laughs> true. the one thing I took from my college experience was my desire to lead. I'd been the president of the student body. I had led various organizations and I knew leadership mm -hmm. development was my passion. Mm -hmm. And I needed to get some experience to have something to share. I needed to find out what worked in leadership and what didn't. So I headed off to corporate America to find that experience. My first job out of college was working for the company that is now known as AT&T, telecommunications industry. At the time, way back then, it was Southwestern Bell. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. I was hired into the leadership development program. It was a program that was designed to quickly develop leaders and, and move them up the ladder. Well, you know, a lot of people would probably love to have had a big corporate job like that, and you just up and left, but, I mean, I'm sure I know the story, but these people probably would like to know why you left. Yeah. Such a great job. Yeah, well, first of all, it was an incredible experience, for which I am very grateful. While I enjoyed it, there there was a stage, as you know, that I was destined to stand on oh, that yeah. never would have come if I stayed in corporate America. I did what many people thought was crazy back then, after only six years. I left the comfort of the of the big giant company and the regular paycheck every two mm. weeks and <laughs> went to work as an associate in a small sales and marketing consulting firm with just six employees. And although it was small, it, it was an opportunity for me to start speaking and training. It lasted about four months. I thought I was I was in the job that I'd be in for a while, but it only lasted about four months when I got a telephone call from the president of a subsidiary or of a company that we used to compete with at the telephone company. Hmm. And he recruited me back into the telecommunications industry to serve in the C-suite. It was about a $50 million telecommunications company. And I knew I would be back as a speaker and a trainer and a consultant someday. And I needed some executive experience. At that point, all I had been was a a manager at, a, at the mid-level of a giant organization. And I needed some executive experience. Uh, and this was my opportunity to get it. And <laughs> to be quite honest, well, it paid me four times what I was making as an associate for that small company. <laughs> Most people would take that job. <laughs> and I was only 29 years old. Wow. So I saved every dime I could. And a year later, I bought out one of the partners of that little sales and marketing consulting firm. I stayed there uh, just over two years uh, before we had the conversation, you and I, about me pursuing my passion of leadership development. Oh, yeah, that's about where we met and I came involved in your life. And, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. So we sold our interest in that firm and opened the doors of Verbalocity on September the 1st, 2000, 20 years ago today. And it has been a ride. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you agree with that. I do. We've had some good times and some bad, and 
Many more good times than bad, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I remember it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, I think back and there were only about two really big changes, challenges that we had. And that were both out of our control, actually. First one took place a year and 10 days in, I think, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, it would have been a year and 10 days in uh, when terrorists, unfortunately, took down the towers on 9-11. Oh, gives me goosebumps still today. Yeah, nothing like having a terrorist attack on U.S. soil to challenge your business after only a year. In fact, I remember I was sitting uh, with our banker at uh, a Denny's having mm. breakfast when you mm -hmm. called to tell me that the that the Twin Towers had been attacked. And immediately after that, the speaking industry changed dramatically yeah. when the fear of flying caused meeting attendance to drop significantly. People were afraid to go to meetings and fewer attendees meant that there were less conference registrations and less conference registrations meant less revenue and less revenue meant less money and less money meant, well, you guessed it, the ability to pay speakers like me. Yeah. Well, and there are a lot of speakers out there that struggled with that. But why don't you tell the listeners what we had to do to not allow that challenge to um, consume our business? Well, with less bookings, we had to evolve. <clears throat> Over the next few years, we moved from purely speaking to a complete leadership development initiative, one that included client surveys, executive coaching, and customized leadership training. It was a blessing in disguise because it allowed us to go deeper with our clients. We could now see the needle move in the organizations we had the privilege of serving from the stage. What was awesome about that is that we had the opportunity to offer those services in addition to you speaking once the meetings industries recovered after 9-11 and you were back on the road again, which is great, but it also helped our business grow. Absolutely. You know, we, we still offer those services today. What could have been the end of our company and certainly was a disappointing time in our company's history, turned into a growth opportunity. It was good stuff. Yeah. And in the next 18 years, we were helping enhance the engagement of employees. As I like to say, I was changing the world <laughs> one speech at a time. Speaking of that, how many speeches do you think you've given over yeah, all these years? You know, I'm not sure what the exact number is. Uh, I know for certain it is over a thousand. You've spent a lot of time on airplanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with those thousand speeches, how many miles do you think you've flown? <laughs> Well, I started out flying on Delta Airlines and I switched to Continental and then I then they were bought by United or vice versa and then all these little puddle jumper flights. Between Flew a few all Southwest those, ones in there too. And the Southwest <laughs> flights in there as well. I would say that between all the carriers, uh, it's been well over a million miles. Wow. I know that uh, most of those were some pretty cool places. Not all of them. Some were out in the middle of nowhere, but you're right. <laughs> most of them were to some pretty cool places. Yeah. From drinking... Chilean wine in Santiago, Chile, to experiencing the fish market in Seattle, from riding a trolley in San Francisco to putting my feet in the pink sand of Bermuda, mm. from Music Row in Nashville to standing in front of Buckingham Palace in London, from Times Square in New York to Bourbon Street in New Orleans, from standing outside the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. to sweating in the humidity of Costa Rica, hundreds of cities and towns throughout the U.S., and many island trips. Mm -hmm. This career has allowed us to see some things that most people will never see. Yep. I remember a lot of those trips, not only because you brought back a lot of unique little things, like when you were in uh, London, you brought back those awesome coffee mugs that we use on a regular basis. We drink, and we drink tea. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and even those Reese's peanut butter cup bowls. Mm, got that those you in Las back. Vegas. Yeah, and you even bought the dogs some, <laughs> I remember the uh, cowboy water bowls or dog cowboy. food bowls that you mm -hmm. bought the girls on a trip bought one day. Bought those in an air airport somewhere. Yep, coming yep. back through Dallas mm -hmm. to home. Mm -hmm. But I will say that of all those trips, even the few that I've been able to attend, was our honeymoon. Oh, and, uh, yes, of was, course. The infamous yes. honeymoon <laughs> trip. You, you mean most people don't work on their honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell people about the adventure of our honeymoon? Oh, I, you sure you want me to tell it? I do. Okay. Well, it started out in Laguna Beach. That's one of our favorite places, Laguna Beach, California. We went there for two days. And while we were supposed to be laying on the beach, enjoying one of our favorite destinations, which we absolutely love, we were sitting in the hotel room while you were working on a presentation. You were about to deliver in Kansas City, I believe. Uh, because your agent at the time booked you to speak on our honeymoon. That was really exciting. Mm -hmm. 
Part of our honeymoon was spent at Kinko's. I don't know if those are all still around, but some people may not know what those are. But we stood around making copies for your presentation, one after another. I kind of felt like it was one of those blue machines that they used to have in the schools oh, back yeah, in the 60s and 70s. Machines. Yeah. yeah. Um, but after two hot, short days of you working, we then flew out to Kansas City where it was snowing and freezing for you to give another presentation mm-hmm. or for you to give a presentation while you were working on it in, in California. We then flew back to San Antonio where you gave another presentation for a local client. So that what was a, our honeymoon. What a honeymoon. <laughs> oh, the joys of being an entrepreneur. Oh, you take great. the work when the work is available. Amen. You know, you did go along on some pretty cool trips. We were together in Costa Rica, yeah. uh, Bermuda, the Bahamas, mm-hmm. Cancun. Come, you know, come to think about it, you were on all the cool <laughs> island trips. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember no. you going to Nisswa, Minnesota in the winter or to Lano, Texas in the summer. That's, well, that's we live in Texas. And I'm from up north, so that's yeah, you know, that's a given. Well, I kind of get both of those. We'll go with that. Okay. We'll go with that. You know, one of those cool trips was to New York for me to sign a book deal with John yeah. Wiley and Sons when they bought the worldwide distribution rights to my first book, Engaged Leadership. Yep, yep. And another one for me was exciting, and I know it was for you as well, was to Atlanta when you received your um, certified speaking professional designation, which, of course, for all of you out there in podcast world, is the highest earned designation in the Nas- National Speakers Association. And his lovely mom got to go with us on that trip. She did get to go with us on that trip. I remember that because my mother hates to fly. Yep. And yet she got on an airplane and flew to Atlanta so that she could see her baby boy get that recognition from the National Speakers Association. That was a very meaningful trip. You know, a lot of great trips with a lot of great clients. You know, it couldn't have happened without a lot of help. In fact, I don't know how many of them listen to this podcast, but I want to thank a few of them here. First, the clients who put me on those well over a thousand stages. While I've always sought to be a point of inspiration for audience members, I found my inspiration in the trust and support of my clients. Without you guys, this journey would never have been so fulfilling. So to our clients, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your leadership development. And to my very first client in 2000, State Farm. Thanks for taking a chance. Amen. To the speakers bureaus around the country, these folks who who book speakers on their clients' behalf, all of you who recommended me to your clients when I was first getting started, thank you. And specifically to two men. Jim Chisholm and Dave Galbraith, who took a chance on me early on. I thank God for putting you guys on the path. Amen. To my family and friends who have cheered me on, although many of you still admit you're not completely sure what it is I do for a living. Too many times I've heard, you mean people pay you to stand on a stage and talk about the same things we are forced to sit and listen to all the time? (laughs) Yeah, something like that. I think I still say that too sometimes. (laughs) Yeah, probably so. (laughs) And of course, to you, Heather, it's been said that in life, it's not where you go, it's who you travel with that matters. I told you at the time I was going to venture out on my own and start a company with very little resources. Your response was simple. Go for it. Together, we built this company that we celebrate today. You're going to make me cry. And finally, (laughs) we've stood the test of time because of the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He got us to a 20-year anniversary and With his continued blessing, we'll see another 20 years. We still have a lot to share. Yeah, we have been blessed in many, many ways. And oh, I got tears in my eyes. Sorry, people. In fact, in uh, January of this year, we were on track to have the best year in the history of our company. I mean, and then, of course, you know, the COVID-19, this evil coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mentioned from the beginning that, that there were two big challenges Mm -hmm. uh, that we have faced. The first was 9-11, and the second biggest challenge is one we're experiencing now with this global pandemic. Not only has the pandemic shut down travel for the most part, it has eliminated conferences and conventions where I would normally speak. But like 9-11, the pandemic has required us to evolve. Mm -hmm. We've built a home studio where we can develop and deliver virtual programs to clients. We're building online coaching resources and an entire line of Tell Me Something Good products. In addition to all of that, you're building a new company as well. Tell our listeners about that. 
Well, I am building a a social media management company in conjunction with you to help organizations enhance their online presence. It's called Let's Talk Smack. In fact, our regular listeners may have uh, heard about it here because we are an advertiser here on the Tell Me Something Good podcast. And uh, having a social media presence in today's society with business is critical for organizations today. And quite frankly, I'm having a lot of fun doing it with the companies that we have on contract and looking forward to many more. I'm certain that like 9-11, the pandemic will be a blessing in disguise because it has allowed us to create products and services which will continue to be available long after I'm back on the road. Oh, yeah. We've learned a lot. (laughs) And we've grown a lot over the last 20 Mm -hmm. years. So what lessons have you learned, do you think? Wow. Where to start? There have been so many. I suppose the first lesson is the one I've alluded to throughout this episode, and that is the need to constantly evolve. Times change and demand changes. And if you're not willing to evolve, then you'll probably get left behind. What about you? What lesson have you learned? I've learned a lot. Maybe the most important one is it's not all about money. I mean, never has been, but it definitely is clearer now. And sure, money's important. We all need it. When you work for someone else, it's their responsibility to make sure the business is producing revenue to pay the bills, including the employees. When you're on your own, like us, there's no paycheck coming in unless you generate the cash flow to make it possible. Mm -hmm. So sure, it's important, but after 20 years, I realized that changing lives is more important. In fact, I've learned that if you focus on changing lives, the business will come. It's proven to work for 20 years, baby. Mm, And God willing, it will continue to work for another 20 years. There are two things I know for certain. One, I would not have wanted to do anything else for the past 20 years. And two, I would not have wanted to do it with anyone else. I love you. Thanks Mm. for sharing the journey. I love you too. And that's a real kiss. (laughs) It's not every day you get to celebrate being in business for 20 years. That is something good. We've had several people ask about the journey, and we wanted to share a little of it with you. Thanks for allowing us to tell some of the story. And before I end this episode with a challenge, I want to remind you that this episode of Tell Me Something Good has been brought to you by Let's Talk Smack, an app that provides daily nudges to take your social media game to a whole new level. Look, If you're tired of not knowing what to post on social media as you promote your small business or just want to have a more engaging presence personally on social media, you need a plan. And the Let's Talk Smack app can help you create your plan. Check it out wherever you get your apps. And now the challenge. Before you come back for the next episode, I challenge you to think about what you need to be celebrating. Maybe it's the amount of time you've been with a company. Maybe it's the amount of time you've been an entrepreneur. Maybe it's the people around you. Whatever it may be, take some time to celebrate it. Well, that's all for today's episode of the Tell Me Something Good podcast. I sure hope you'll join us again next week. In the meantime, be listening for our special episode of Champagne Friday each Friday morning. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Also, if you can, leave me a rating and review. Your support can help someone else as we work to spread positivity to the world. If you have a question for the podcast, want to share your good stuff, or need to find the links to join us on social media, jump over to findthegoodinlife.com. You'll find all you need right there on the front page. Thanks for listening. Until next week, I'll be praying for God to bless you in mighty ways. Now, Get out there and love on somebody. You've been listening to the Tell Me Something Good podcast. The content of the podcast is meant to engage, encourage, and enlighten you to become more positive. It's not meant to diagnose, treat, or replace the personalized care provided by a trained professional. If you're struggling with depression or mental health issues, please reach out to a counselor for diagnosis and treatment. Until next time. Be positive, people.